The 50 years between 1900 and 1950 continued to bring about tremendous change in our state, change driven in large part by major global events. 1914 brought a great war in Europe. It was known as World War I. The war meant that less food was grown in Europe as in peacetime, and America's farmers were called upon to produce more food to send across the Atlantic. The increased demand led to a boom in prices paid to farmers. They were now able to afford new tractors, new equipment, and better livestock. The whole country was finding new ways to grow, process, and ship large amounts of food. After World War I, Americans enjoyed a growing economy and new conveniences. Personal automobiles, telephones, and radios. People danced the nights away as they enjoyed a decade of economic growth in America. Vegetable farms started in Western Washington in the early 1900s by Japanese and Italian immigrants and were joined by a growing number of dairy farms, hop farms, and fruit orchards. These crops could not be harvested with a tractor. It required people. Native Americans often worked with white workers to harvest crops. But as farms grew, they needed more labor and began inviting laborers to come to the state on a seasonal basis. Migrant laborers from Japan, Philippines, and Latin American countries all helped harvest food and hops. Meanwhile, wheat farmers in eastern Washington expanded their holdings to take advantage of the high prices for wheat. Instead of depending entirely on horses and mules, they began to use gas-powered tractors now being produced in large factories. Then, it all came to a screeching halt. The economy was devastated by the stock market crash in 1929. Millions of people saw their life savings immediately disappear as banks failed. People had far less money to spend. Businesses started to close and millions of people lost their jobs. This period in the 1930s was called the Great Depression. To make things more difficult for farmers and food processors in Washington, Europe had recovered from the war and was again producing its own food. With less demand, prices for crops and livestock went lower. Some farmers couldn't afford the payments on the new tractors and equipment and were forced to sell their farms. Other farmers began to organize in groups like the Grange and Grower Associations to help one another and promote research and more trade to improve their chance of success. In an effort to spur the economy and give people a sense of meaningful work, the U.S. government started several programs for people in need. To ensure reliable food supplies, the government invested in large irrigation projects around the country, like the massive Columbia Basin Project. Washington's Grand Coulee Dam, one of three dams built on the Columbia River in the 1930s, was built to supply electrical power and to irrigate water to over 670,000 acres as part of the project. That helped provide water to over 10,000 farms. Things were slowly improving when another major war started in Europe in 1939. This conflict became known as World War II. The U.S. government turned to its agricultural industry to feed and supply the troops worldwide. And Washington State was a prime location for mass food production and distribution because of the diversity and quality of crops and its access to major railroad, port, and emerging airport infrastructure. Wartime canning and victory gardens were symbols of patriotism by the government and for those working at the factories. War also brought out racism against Japanese Americans, whom some suspected, without evidence, remained loyal to Japan. Most were forced to sell their farms, and many were detained in camps, deprived of their rights as American citizens. The war required increases in food production. As the demand for labor in factories and fields increased, a quarter million new immigrants came to the area including thousands of African Americans 
To ship the food to the war fronts, Washington agriculture improved its preservation processes, such as dehydration of fruits, vegetables, milk, and eggs. These innovations created more products to sell to American consumers and around the world in the future. The state's fishing industry also continued as one of the most productive in the country. Large canneries preserved fish and seafood to be shipped around the world. Canneries relied on migrant labor after their work was done in fields and orchards. After the war, America's economy and population boomed again. And now, families could afford a greater variety of foods and food products that made cooking more convenient. Washington's farmers began to specialize in growing crops to meet the opportunities in the United States and in Asia. Farmers weren't just growing enough to feed people in our cities at markets like Pike Place in Seattle they began growing enough to help feed people across the world. Washington was well suited to grow, process, and ship a wide variety of crops, including red raspberries, hops, spearmint, apples, sweet cherries, pears, grapes, carrots, potatoes, and asparagus. Farmers took advantage of this opportunity and expanded greatly. The 50 years between 1900 and 1950 were shaped by a global war, an economic disaster, huge new programs by the federal government, another global war, and a rapid economic boom. Washington emerged as a key region for growing, processing, and transporting food around the globe, just as the world was about to get more connected and more crowded.